a bond yield curve and the risks that go with it? What? I'm Clay, let me explain. Before we get to the risk, let's just first talk about the bond yield curve. If you don't even know what bonds are, I'll put a link down below and I did a video um, where I talk about the bonds, but I kinda wanna take that next step now and look at the yield curve and then the risks that go with it. So first off, let's just bond yield curve. I wanna focus on this word real quick. What does yield actually mean in the world of bonds? And a yield is just simply how much cheddar how much money, it's not actual cheese, don't worry about it. How much money is currently being paid? Paid to who? Well, well, paid to you. So how does that actually work from a calculation perspective? Well, looking at the numbers, you have the annual, so you know how much does it pay, coupon payment, Again, if it, what's a coupon payment? Like I said, go back, watch the video that's down below. The annual coupon payment, and you're gonna divide that by the bond face value. Again, face value? What is that? Again, go back and watch that video. So in a case, situation, if you had you know one bond that was had a face value, Value of 1,000. Yes, I have my notes up there off the screen. Really high-tech magic. But he had 1,000, and let's say you made annually $75 on it. Then what would the yield on that be? Well, you would just take the $75. You would divide that by 1,000. So again, annual coupon payment, 75, divide, divided by bond face value, 1,000. And that's going to give you a 7.5% yield okay so this is how you calculate the yield nothing fancy nothing complicated about it let's now move on to the actual curve before we get to the actual curve itself let's break down the graph that it's on so here again we are now talking about uh the curve and down here you have time and mo mainly it is you know three months five years we'll call it 10 20 and then way out here 30 years. So down here, just simply time, okay? Pretty straightforward. And then up here we have the yield percent, hence the yield curve. And the yield curve as a percentage is being measured over time. And the way that the curve actually functions normally, and I'll get to that in a future video, but is, right, is like this. Meaning, the longer the bond, as far as maturity, again, maturity being when you're, when you're paid in full, think back to the, the old video, but the longer to maturity, the higher the yield goes, right? So if you're 10, well, you're over here. If you're at 20, you're over here, so on and so forth. So that is what the normal yield curve looks like for bonds. But why does it look like that? Well, there are more risks Normally, and like I said, this is why things can get weirder when you have an inverted yield curve, which I'll get to in another video. But normally, the longer you hold on to something, you're exposing yourself to more risk, which I'll talk about. And because there's more risk, well, people need a higher reward. People need a higher yield percentage to compensate for that additional risk that is being taken on. And again, where is that additional risk being taken on from? Well, just in the fact that you, you, you're holding that bond for a longer period of time. So let's break down three risks. Now there's lots of kind of other ones out there that you could argue, but three main risks, let's look at those. Risk number one comes in the form of interest rates. Interest rates being dictated by the government institution known as the Federal Reserve or in kind of street lingo, if you will, the Fed. So the Fed is in charge of interest rates, which are expressed as a percentage. So they make decisions and that's what's gonna affect mortgage rates, that would uh, you know, affect a, a car payment rate, credit card, I mean, they're all anything that has interest attached to it is gonna be influenced by this government body known as the Federal Reserve, again, the Fed. So what is the actual relationship out there as far as interest rates? So we have, in 
we have interest rates over here versus actual bond prices. Again, the price at which you would be able to get a bond. So what is that relationship? Well, that relationship goes like that, meaning the lower interest rates get, the higher bond prices actually go. Or in other words, the higher interest rates go. So if interest rates are rising, then bond prices, they're gonna be losing, You know, they're not gonna be as valuable. So look at it like this. Let's say that we have Trip, and he's out there and he owns a bond that pays 3%. So that's TRIPS. And then all of a sudden the Fed says, you know what? We're gonna raise interest rates. So interest rates are you know, somewhere around here and we're gonna raise interest rates. So it goes from here up to here. Well, now all of a sudden it goes, you know, that level is gonna change. What does that do? Why is that the case? Well, he's now going to be under the, under the curve. Let's assign a number to that. Let's just say they move it to 4.5%. Well, now, people are going to, well, why would I want that bond at 3%? You know, there's other choices out there, such as 4.5%. You, know, you get the math, right? Four and a half, four and a half, four and a half percent higher than three. So there, there's some number crunching going on here that are that is not working out in TRIPS favor. And because of that, bond prices are going to go down. The value of TRIPS bond, bond is going to go down. Why? Because there's less demand for it. And if there's less demand for something, prices are gonna go down. Why is there less demand? Well, because interest rates have gone up. I'll say that again. Tripp's bond, the value of his bond has gone down. Why has it gone down? Well, demand has gone down for it. And when less people want something, prices, values will go down. Why do less people want it? Well, because interest rates have risen and that is gonna force down demand for varying bonds. So that is a risk that you put yourself out there for. The longer you hold on to a bond, you know, the, the longer that maturity date, the more potential you have for the Fed to be you know, messing around with interest rates up and down and all that. So this is always a fluctuating market, so I don't wanna too oversimplify things, but at the core, that is why people are gonna be wanting more percentage from the yield the longer and longer they hold because there is this risk that the Fed could step in and all of a sudden start to mess around with those interest rates. Let's go on to risk number two. Inflation, that is definitely a risk that exists out there. If you're not quite sure what inflation is, how it works, I have another video that uh, you can go and check out. So, but I'm gonna assume that you understand what inflation is, what causes it and all that good stuff. But let's just say in this example, once again, we have Trip, and he is at 3% on the yield for that bond. And let's just say that inflation for whatever reason, but inflation goes up, by 5%. So what has that done to the value of TRIPS bond? That inflation rising 5%, what has that done to the, the value of a 3% bond? Well, let's go through the math real quick. So TRIP is getting 3%, but now all of a sudden, inflation has risen by five. So in all actuality, you gotta subtract away the 5% because that's how much inflation has risen. And now what do you have? Well, you have Trip is technically losing money because he's 2% behind what the actual inflation is. So in that situation, Trip's bond is now losing value because who is going to want a bond? Again, demand decreasing. Who is going to want a bond that's not keeping up with inflation? And once more, the longer you hold on to something, the more risk that come across that, yeah, inflation might get you. So that's why, well, if I'm gonna hold something for 20 years, that better be a really good yield because I don't need inflation eating into it or you know, surpassing it or anything like that. So longer you hold, the more possibility that inflation creeps in and therefore, because you have more possibility that occurs, then you're gonna want a little bit more. Higher risk, higher reward. And the, higher, or the longer you hold, yeah, you, you do have a higher risk of that uh, of occurring. So just inflation, if inflation does something different, then yeah, that's a threat that exists. So that's why you're gonna want more yield the longer you hold onto it. And let's get on to that final risk. And the final risk is just due to deadbeats. Well, not quite, that's probably not proper. Default. 
And nothing fancy here. What is default? Default just means you don't get paid. Why wouldn't you get paid? Well, if let's say it's a corporate bond and the company just poof, disappears, well, there goes your money. That's why there's a thing such as junk bonds. Junk bonds are gonna pay really high yields, but they're called junk bonds for a reason because there's a lot of risk that poof, maybe that company is just turns out to be a deadbeat and they don't pay anything back. But I don't, I don't know, maybe maybe the yield is worth the risk that they, so that's it, risk and reward. It's, it's a, you know, a, a matter of kind of what you have to uh, you know, figure out on your own, but that is the other risk out there is default. And the way that it works as far as this is all concerned is you have time and you have, I'll just call it failure because that is why, you know, a company or I mean a, a country on a, on a bigger bigger scale would not pay you is because, well, they, they failed as a company. They failed as a country. And just the more time that exists, the more opportunity at failure, right? That, that's pretty straightforward. The longer something exists, the more time it has to fail. Now, of course, that may mean the more time it has to succeed. But if I'm, you know, if a company exists right now and I buy something and my, my odds that they exist in two weeks, probably pretty good. But 20 years, you, you just never know. Think of Kodak. Anybody remember Kodak cameras? Anybody remember Enron? That's another story though. But that's the idea here, is the longer you hold, the longer something has to fail, and therefore, the higher the risk is of just not getting paid. Therefore, going back to the yield curve, that is another reason why way far out there, those yields got higher and higher the longer you hold. Now, if this was some sort of government bond um, and failure was like the USA, well then, that'd be a really bad situation if the USA is not paying because of default, is not paying because of failure. And that is also why the United States and, and the government treasuries, government bonds, those are considered very, very safe because literally the only way you wanna get paid back on those is if the United States of America fails and goes into deadbeat status. Now, maybe you think that's gonna happen, maybe you don't think that's gonna happen. But the idea, as far as the world thinks, as far as the world views, this is why when there's ever panic or anything, money flows into the, the, the you know, treasuries because people still view, all right, well, I, I'm gonna, that's at least some sort of safe place to store my money because the only way that I'm not gonna get paid back from that is if the USA fails. And I don't think the USA is gonna fail. But I'm not trying to turn this into a political debate, but that is why a lot of times uh, you know, people do put it in US treasuries and why US treasuries are considered the safest form. Now, you could get... You could get eaten alive with inflation. You could get eaten alive uh, with, uh, you know, the other um, inflation. And what was the first one? The first one was what? Why can't? Oh yeah, interest rates. Those things could get you. But as far as the default risk, yeah, a very very low uh, risk of that actually happening. But that is how the yield curve works. Those are the risks that influence it. But at the core, if you have to explain this in uh, like a class, just the best way to explain it is, hey, listen, the longer I have to hold a bond. That's just the longer that something to go wrong could go wrong. Therefore, I need to be paid more for that because I am taking on more risk as the investor. Therefore, I need to be paid higher uh, reward, higher return because of that risk. And again, the risk coming from simply, there's more time for you know brown stuff to hit the fan. If you are out there trading alone currently and maybe are in the market looking for a community to join to assist you in your trading or to just help you, you know, give you another set of eyeballs, then I do have a private trading community where you can trade alongside me and other experienced traders. So what you see popping up on the screen right now is both an information link. So if you click on the inner circle one, that is going to take you to the page where I explain all the details of what exactly come with the community, both the chat room and the newsletter. And then the other image that has popped up is a behind the scenes tour where you can see exactly what is going to you know, be contained within the community. I take you through, like I said, a behind the scenes tour of everything. And that way you'll know precisely what you are getting uh, you know, when you join. So definitely check that stuff out if you are interested and thinking about you know, wanting to join a community and let me know if you have any questions.